Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video I'm going to explain some of the new dynamic array functions including unique and filter. And this is the third video in a series on my submission for Excel Hash, and I'm explaining how I created this interactive report and dashboard. So if you haven't seen the first two videos, definitely check those out. In part one, I explain exactly what this file is and how it works. And in this video, we're going to look at the calc sheet and how we create these calculations that are used on the dashboard. And we're using the new dynamic array functions for this. We're going to look at both the unique and filter functions, which allow us to return multiple results to multiple cells. All right, so we're going to start on the dashboard sheet. And again, we have this functionality when we click the drop down and select a department, that's going to filter down our employee list. So we want to create the formulas that create this functionality. So I'm going to jump over to the calc example sheet. And here is the formula here. You can see it's kind of a long formula, but I'm going to break it down and explain it uh, step by step. We're going to use both the unique and filter functions. So we'll first look at the unique function. I'm just going to type type equals and then start typing the word unique and this function returns the unique values uh, from a range or an array so we'll tab into that it has three arguments but we really only need the range and in this case we want to return a list of employees so we'll do that from the data table here we have all our employees in column a but of course there is duplicates there so we're just going to reference uh, the employee column here in uh, the data table close the parentheses and then hit enter and that will give us a list of unique values in this spill range here so again returning multiple results to multiple cells so this is great but what we actually need to do is filter this down based on the department that's selected on the dashboard sheet so for that we're going to use the filter function another new dynamic array function so we'll start typing filter we'll tab into that and uh, filter has three arguments. The first is the array, and this is the range that we want to return. Now this can be multiple columns, uh, but in this case, we're only going to return one column, which is the employee column. So we'll reference that. Again, that's on the data table. Just uh, reference the employee column here. Then we'll type a comma, and then we'll jump back over to the calc example sheet. And actually what we want to do next is for the include argument, this is the filter criteria that we want to specify. So here we want to specify the department and the department that is selected is on the dashboard sheet. So we'll jump over to the dashboard sheet. We can see we have the department here in cell B5. Now I've made this a merged cell and you can't select merged cells right here when you're editing a formula. For those of you that hate merged cells, <laughs> I apologize because I am usually in that camp, but it just happens to work out in this scenario with this merged cell. So one little trick is we can select cell B6 and then hit the up arrow on the keyboard to uh, create a reference to cell B5. We'll see it there. And then we're going to type equals. So we want B5 equals. We'll go over to the data tab and we're going to reference the department column in our data table. So we can see the reference created there. So what's happening here is it's just the filter criteria is just setting uh, or saying that within this department column, we want to look for all the rows or all the cells that are equal to the department that's selected on the dashboard sheet, that value in cell B5. And then finally, filter does have an if empty argument, which we can specify here as well. This is just if no, no rows are returned based on the filter criteria, we can just put the word empty here so it doesn't return an error. Uh, that's optional. It's an optional argument. But I'll just put the word empty, you can put whatever you want there, uh, close the parentheses and hit enter. And you can see now we get a list, a filtered list of all those employees in that specific department. Now there are duplicates here. As we can see, here's the correct result, which would should just be Pam, Creed, and Meredith. Uh, and that's all we're getting. Those are the names we're getting in this list. However, there are duplicates. So we can use the unique function. We can wrap this formula in the unique function. We'll edit it again. I'll just start typing unique, tab into that. And again, we're just uh, feeding it this array, the result from the filter function. So that's all we need close the parentheses and hit enter and now this will filter down the results for only those people in that specific department so this is looking good but there is one potential issue and that's when the user selects all departments on the dashboard sheet so if we select all departments 
jump back over to our calc example sheet, you'll see now this is returning empty. And that's because it's not finding uh, any results for the filter criteria, because we're now saying that the department, if we go over to the data tab, the department, uh, we want to return all the rows where the department equals all departments. But there's no rows here, or no values in any of these cells that say all departments. So there's a few different ways to handle this. We could actually handle this in the error itself, the not empty, or the, I'm sorry, the is empty uh, argument within filter. We could handle it there. However, if there's any new departments added, that might kind of handle that error as well. We might not want that. So instead, I used an if statement for this. So jump back over to the calc example sheet. We'll edit this cell. And we're going to use an if uh, function. So we'll just tab into that. And our logical test, we're going to go back to the dashboard and again uh, make reference to cell B5. So B5, and we're going to set that equals to. So we're going to say if that is equal to, and then uh, we want it to equal all departments. And I actually have this value here on this calc sheet. Here's a list of those. And I'm going to explain how I created this list in a future video. But for right now, we'll just select cell J5, I'm sorry, J2, which says all departments right there. So whenever B5 equals J2, I'll type a comma there. In that case, if that's true, then we just want to return a list of all the employees. Uh, so all those unique values. So there's a few ways we could do that. We could use the unique function uh, just like we did in uh, that previous uh, cell, or the previous column, I should say. We could use the unique function and then go over to the data tab and uh, just reference the employee column there close the parentheses, and that's uh, one way to do it. Another way to do it is since we've already written this formula in another cell, can just delete that. And instead, if we go to our calc example sheet, we actually have that formula right here in B2. So I'm just going to delete this. We don't want the uh, reference there to the sheet. We're just going to select B2. I actually have to delete this reference here. And then we're going to oops, delete the reference. Let's try that again. And there we go. And then at the end of this, we're going to put the hashtag uh, or pound symbol, and that's going to reference that spill range for that formula. So B2 with the pound symbol, you can see the outline here. It's referencing that entire spill range that that formula returns. So in this cell, we just have that unique function. So there's two ways to go about it. That's my point there. Since we're already calculating a list of unique values somewhere else, might as well reuse that. That should improve our calculation speed overall. So might as well reuse that cell that's doing that calculation. And that's uh, one way to go about it. So that's saying if those two are equal, if the all departments is selected on the dashboard, then we'll return this list of unique values. Otherwise, we're going to filter down based on the department selected and return a list of unique values from our uh, data table. So we'll hit enter there. It should all be good. Oops, not all good yet. We need it. Oh, it's going to Excel added the extra parenthesis there for me. And uh, that, now it's looking good. So we'll go back and test one more time. Choose uh, a different department. Go over to our calc example. And we can see now that we just have a unique list of those employees in that department. So that's an overview of how to use the unique and filter functions. I love these new functions. It's a great way to return multiple results to multiple cells. You can use it in place of trying to do a VLOOKUP where you're trying to return multiple results. So a lot of possibilities with these functions here in Office 365. Now, if you don't have Office 365 and the latest version of Excel, you could potentially create this setup with a pivot table as well. Maybe I'll do another bonus video on that to show that setup. But I just want to let you know it is possible to do all this without these new functions. I just really like uh, how these work and it makes it pretty easy to do this kind of setup and interactive reporting. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at a few other new uh, dynamic array formulas, which are the sort and sort by functions. And those will allow us to put our employee list in a ranked order based based on their time in the office. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.